Hey guys, it's Mick here. I know you're at home, quarantined, social distancing or whatever, just wishing you were on some tropical island. Well, stay tuned because this fried jerk chicken is super easy and it's guaranteed to have you in paradise. Okay, so first we're going to brine our chicken. And brining is a process that I talk about often because I just don't like eating dry food. And brining kind of prevents that. It's kind of a foolproof way to make sure your meat is super juicy. We're really gonna take some ice water, some herbs, some pepper, red pepper, black pepper, some garlic cloves, and kind of infuse the chicken with this flavored moisture pretty much I didn't really measure out the water as much as I'm gonna measure out the salt and the sugar we're gonna use about half a cup of salt and we're gonna follow that with half a cup of sugar and really what brining does scientifically is just takes everything that's in the water which is at a high concentration and kind of infuses it into the chicken which has a low concentration of all these things and what I really should have done is taken all this and put it on the stove top to let it boil and simmer and just let the flavors kind of mesh well together. So that's what I'm going to ask you guys to do if you're going to try this at home. But at the end of the day, the chicken is going to be sitting in the brine for about an hour or two. So it's going to get infused. Don't worry about that. And what I'm doing now is adding the herbs that I have, some thyme and some rosemary. I'm kind of crushing them up in my hands before I put them into the water just to bruise them a little bit to release some of that flavor and some of that aroma. And I'm doing it with the rosemary right now, you can see. And after this, I'm going to take that garlic that I showed you guys and kind of crush it underneath my knife. You can kind of see me do it in the corner over there. And after I crush it, I'm going to peel it and just drop it into the water. I don't really need to cut it up beyond that because it's crushed and bruised. It's going to kind of release on its own there. And this is really all preference based. You can add whatever herbs you got on hand. It's not really going to be a strong infusion because we're not like brining a whole turkey. They're just some chicken thighs. So it's going to be juicy, but it's you're not going to taste the rosemary inside of the chicken at all. And what I'm doing now is just stirring it to just make sure everything is well dissolved and fully incorporated in there. And yeah. After all is said and done, I'm gonna go just place the chicken in there. I don't want it to splash around. We don't want any cross contamination in there. But if you need to add more water, now's the time. Make sure your water is cold. I'm definitely gonna go in and add some ice cubes just to be sure that the water doesn't remain or get up to room temperature because, you know, it's breeding grounds for bacteria and we don't want that. Obviously, your bowl can go into the fridge. There's absolutely no room in my fridge for anything else because we've stocked up for this quarantine, so. I'm putting some ice cubes in there. I forgot some black pepper, so I'm putting that in there now. But it's going to stay cold because it's also in a stainless steel bowl. But if you don't have a stainless steel bowl, you're fine. The ice cubes will do the trick. So just cover that up and let it chill out literally for like an hour and a half to two hours. And in the meantime, I don't know, watch a movie, learn a skill. The world is your oyster. After your two hours have passed, we can kind of work on seasoning the jerk chicken and getting that flour ready for the chicken to be dipped into. Got some cornstarch, some seasoning, and here we go. I used about two cups of flour, again, not really measuring because who cares? After that, we'll add about half a cup of cornstarch. The cornstarch is really just to increase the likelihood that my chicken will come out crispy. I hate soggy fried chicken. 
and cornstarch seems to work for me. It's obviously not a necessity, but I recommend it. I bought this jerk seasoning at some random spice shop that I happened to pass by in Long Island. And it tastes different than what I'm used to, but I like it. And it works now. Um, sprinkled that in there. Uh, some onion powder we're going to use. And the thing is, you can be very liberal with your seasoning because between all that flour, it's going to be hard for that seasoning to, you know, pop out and shine through. Use some garlic powder in there. Of course, you can use cayenne, um, cumin, whatever your heart desires, really. I'm keeping it simple because I use the brine. Sprinkle a little bit of salt in there. Because we've brined it, we don't need a ton of salt because we're still trying to, you know, maintain our health a little bit here, even though it's fried and stir it up, stir it up, make sure everything is evenly incorporated. Okay, so after your chicken is finished brining, you're gonna rinse it off, kind of pat it dry, and we're ready to season it. I use this Walker's wood for pretty much all my jerk necessities. A spoonful is usually enough, but I like heat, so I'm using two spoonfuls. And then I'm gonna use my hands to just make sure the seasoning gets into all of the nooks and crannies for all the pieces of my chicken thighs. And we're gonna move forward from there, you know? It's not much to it. This is really the base of our jerk seasoning. So here is where things kinda heat up, no pun intended. We're gonna take each piece of chicken thigh from our bowl with the chicken seasoning, I mean the jerk seasoning in there, and then we're gonna just transfer it over to the bowl with the flour in it, toss it around a little bit to make sure that every nook and cranny is completely covered in flour. And then we're gonna let it rest on this rack for a little while, a couple, maybe like 10 minutes while you get the rest of your chicken set up and then get the oil warmed up because we want the flour to set. We don't want it to just sledge off when we put it into the oil. You know, sometimes you'll see recipes where people kind of dip their chicken in batter either before or after they flour it, but maybe I just haven't mastered the art of fried chicken yet. I find that my chicken kind of gets a little bit soggy when I do that. So the flour is pretty much enough for me. And with the cornstarch, it gets equally as crispy. So I'm not really worried about missing or skipping that step. But, you know, you, you'll see it done a lot of different ways. And this is mine. Alright, now that our chicken is all floured up, we're going to throw some vegetable oil in a pot of maybe about like two inches deep. We're not really trying to deep fry here, but we don't want oil spraying all over the place. And we're going to heat it to about 350, 375. And you saw what I did was just sprinkle some flour in there to make sure that it bubbled up on contact. And that's how I know the chicken is ready to be fried. Throw the chicken in there and kind of leave it to do its thing for about five minutes, then flip it and until it gets a nice golden color. Like so, like that. <laughs> and you know, if you're really fancy, you can use a meat thermometer to let you know when the chicken gets to 165 on the inside. But I, at this point, I kind of just let my ancestors guide me and let me know when the chicken is done. And it worked. Okay, so if you've ever had Red Snapper at any Jamaican restaurant, they serve it with these onions and peppers that are spicy but sweet on top. And they're called Escovitch peppers. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. 
So I'm cutting up half an onion and using some peppers that I had frozen in the freezer. I'm gonna break those onions up and have some water and vinegar and sugar. And if you have scotch bonnet, use scotch bonnet. I didn't, so I kind of just used whatever hot sauce I had on hand, a little bit of that in a pot on the stove and just let the peppers and onions kind of just simmer down a little bit. We don't really need to cook them, cook them, because we still want them to have a little bit of a crunch to it to add some texture to our sandwich. So this last part is the assembly. And really what I have here is just some sriracha mayo that I threw some of the Walker's Wood Jerk seasoning into that I'm very sloppily sprinkling on some cocoa bread that I got from the Caribbean market putting the jerk chicken on top and then topping that with some of the Escovich peppers. And that's really all there is to it, you know? It took a little bit of prep, but I'd say it was completely worth it. And I want you guys to let me know if you do give it a try. Leave it in the comments, tell me how it was. And of course, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all of that jazz. I really got, I hope you guys enjoyed this and Stay tuned for some more quarantine kitchen cooking. <laughs> Bye. Stay safe, y'all.